All right, welcome back. And now to my interview segment, where manufacturers are reacting to the recently released 2023 Fiscal Policy Measures FPM by the Federal Ministry of Finance, Budget and National Planning, including the excessive increase in excise on beverages and tobacco and the introduction of a tax on single-use plastics, among others. Well, joining me now is the DG of the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria, Shegu Ajayikaru. Many thanks for joining me on PLUS TV uh, Business Insights. Thank you for having me. All right, let's start this way. Now, the manufacturing sector is in acute recession. But what's the impact directly on the 2023 uh, PM? What is it really having on the manufacturing sector? Yes, uh, thank you. Again, you already indicated that the sector is faced with recession. And this was actually compounded by the Naira transition and the, the law in sales that resulted from it. So on the back of this, we now have this escalation of excise duty as uh, indicated in the 2023 fiscal policy measures of government. What this has done is to effectively uh, put an end to any profit projection by any of those industries going forward. Uh, you will recall uh, we had an agreement with the Ministry of Finance, Budget, and National Planning way back 2022, where we entered into a three-year roadmap uh, that was going to uh, end 2024. But not quite a year after it was entered into, there was an escalation that was way out of the agreed roadmap. And that was what we saw in the 2023 fiscal policy measures that gave us uh, gave rise to the concern that we expressed. All right, now I need to understand what uh, is international best practice uh, surrounding issues like this. Uh, is it consistent with it? Because from what we hear, the sector is being taxed about five times more than the average, you know, for um, excise duty. What is the situation really? Yeah, you are right. The, we are taxed five times higher. And that is quite inconsistent with international best practice. What is expected is for government to allow the policy environment to, to bring on board the policy environment that allows for planning and projections. That is the only way any company can decide to make sound investment judgment. And this is what it has eroded. Many people who want to invest in Nigeria will be willing of such an investment because you cannot be certain that what government has said it will do, it will do. And then the projections that you have made for those three years, you will have to review them and it may be inconsistent with what you have shared with your shareholders and uh, stakeholders. Now, I'm trying to understand uh, what the direct impact would really lead. Uh, in my opinion, I'm thinking that there, there might likely be uh, low sales and uh, it might impact on the structure of businesses in the uh, subsector. C can you throw more light on that? Yes. You see, um, apart because there's a, there's a downward trend in the disposable income of an average Nigeria. This was compounded by the Naira transition and the effect we are still having. There's also inflation that has gone beyond uh, 20, 20, 23, 24, 25%. There is also the issue of uh, even some states not being able to pay the minimum wage. So when you see all across the country a reduction in disposable income, you are going to see low purchases. When there are low purchases, the manufacturer will reduce his installed capacity because there's no point for you to produce what you cannot sell. So you are going to start to see a drop in job uh, creation. You're also going to see some downsizing. Then it's going to affect those that are in the value chain, those who are doing wholesale and retail, and those whose livelihood depend on the daily sales that they make from this product. You're also going to deny the average Nigerian the opportunity to enjoy these goods of products. And the side effect of all of this is that you see a massive influx of illicit and unwholesome products. Mm. So along the value chain, there is a general negative impact, even on government revenues. Mm. 
All right, before we talk about the impact on government revenue, I want to look at um, the value chain in, that, uh, in those subsectors that uh, uh, the alcoholic and beverage and, of course, uh, tobacco. You know, in my opinion, there is, it is really wide. We have uh, the bottlers, we have distributors, we have the farmers, and it is wide. So uh, I'm trying to understand how it will really impact on them. Can you tell us more? Yes, for instance, those who are big in packaging, because there will be reduced sales and there will be reduced order from this manufacturing industry, you are going to have them not being able to uh, send as much as they would. So those that are involved in packaging, those that are producing the pots, those that are producing the wrapping uh, sheets, and those who rely on uh, uh, who rely on farmers to supply them. The farmers will not, those who are able to produce, will not be able to sell their products. So it's going to impact negatively on the agricultural sector. Also, in the logistics value chain, we are going to see a reduction in the trips that they have to make. Uh, you, you are going to notice that the taxes that all these, uh, all these uh, players in the value chain engage in, there's going to be a reduction in the remittance that they, they make to government. So what you are likely to see is a chain of downturn in the numbers of persons that are engaged in those uh, in, in those businesses. So apart from the financial aspect of it, there's also the social aspect uh, of, of the impact. All right, I want to quote uh, something that you said, uh, uh, the Manufacturers Association, that he said uh, in its um, press um, release uh, concerning that. Uh, you said the total excise derivable from the exercisable uh, sector is insignificant when compared to Nigeria's revenue needs. Can you explain more? Yes. Uh, so what we are noticing is that government assumes that it will get about 150 billion naira in addition uh, in when this exercise is increased. But if you look at the size of the budget deficit that government is trying to cure, it's 12 trillion. So it's a significant uh, addition uh, in terms of trying to grow the volume. So we are saying that the social impact, the economic impact that this is going to have is not justifiable. How will you? How, how is it going to help you? How is 150 billion going to assuage or cure uh, an ailment that is 12 trillion? That 12 trillion is required. So that's what we are saying. That this should not be too much for governments to, to, to reverse. This this will not be too much for governments to forego and repeat in terms of the uh, likely expansion in uh, capacity utilization. Uh, that they are going to gain if we maintain the roadmap that has been set for 2022. Because at the, after the third quarter, my assumption is that we will start to see a downward trend. And even that 150 billion, government is not even going to get. Mm. Okay, fine. Uh, I need to look at our national tax policy and, uh, you know, this uh, 2023 FPM. Is the implementation period provided for in the 2023 uh, um, FPM looking at our national tax policy? Yes, it's inconsistent. And to that extent, we are asking that uh, due process should be allowed to, uh, should be followed. But we are hoping that uh, from, from what and we are hoping that government is looking for a way to cure this infraction because it can even uh, lead to litigation. And I hope that government will not allow it to, to, to get to that level. It's, uh, it's, it can be resolved administratively. All right, now, so as it is, with all of these bottlenecks and inconsistencies and the impact that you have talked about now, uh, what is the way forward and what is um, the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria going to do in the next coming days and weeks? Okay, thank you. We have made it clear that uh, we appeal to government to reverse the escalation in these uh, fiscal policy measures, uh, particularly as it affects the alcoholic beverages and tobacco. 
And the reason is very clear. We have stated that it will negatively impact the industries immediately and that on a sustainable basis is not good for government. So we are looking for a reversal even before the end of this administration, which is coming in another nine, ten days. And that if that fails, we are hoping that within the first month of the new administration, it should be reversed. Mm. Because if it allows to stay, it will make the food and beverage sector to follow in the tradition of the tire industry and also the textile industry. There is no reason for us to create crisis in this sector that is making the most contribution to manufacturing GDP in Nigeria. So, I mean, that is the immediate we are asking. And, of course, uh, as to what man is doing, we continue to engage government and we continue to hope that uh, the message will be uh, hard enough to reach to initiate government action. All right, thank you so much. I do appreciate um, your time and the input um, that you have um, uh, mentioned and um, to, uh, talk to us about, and that we just hope that um, the, the administration of um, President Muhammad Buhari, of course the incoming one, would actually do something to, you know, create the enabling environment for our manufacturing sector to thrive. We do appreciate your time. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, our pleasure. Uh, I have been speaking with the DG of the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria, uh, Shego Ajayikari, and uh, he's talked extensively concerning this new excise duty. But as we go on the show, I'll leave you with this feature on tackling unemployment. I am Justin Akadonia. Many thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next time. Bye for now. The nation's higher educational institutions equip graduates with hard skills while neglecting the development of employability skills, which are core for transitioning into the labor market, as well as for workplace productivity. The lack of these skills in graduates keeps them in the pool of the unemployed, no matter their degree of certification. Now, Executive Director Eagle Foundation, Tuluashi Olanio, says this project aims to equip participants with the right skill set for employment and also prepare them for the world of entrepreneurship. Uh, a good number of young people um, are currently not unemployed, if able. And this is because um, they lack the basic skills, like critical thinking, problem solving, those skills that can help them perform in the labor market. So employers are not getting what they want from them. Unfortunately, they're able to employ them. And after the flag of this project, we're setting up um, mentoring and coaching um, centers across different institutions where students are able to speak to coaches and are able to like have continuous um, career development sessions so that it doesn't just end here. One of the unique aspects of this training is to provide access to jobs for selected participants and also expose them to the realities of the workplace. Employability is an important part of um, our economic growth because when the people of the nation or the society are employed, productivity is increased as a company, I mean as a country, and um, the GDP of the country also try some productivity. A way forward is for people to actually consider a lot of capacity building trainings. The four walls of an academic institution is not going to provide all the kind of knowledge and skills you need. You have to self-develop, self-train yourself through different taking part in trainings, capacity building and the likes. There are several causes of graduate unemployment in Nigeria, including an inelastic labor market to absorb the turnover. Some of the participants share their thoughts. Still by skill acquisition, because most of the like most most companies now, I don't know how to put that English. Like, they don't really want to employ more because technology is already taking over over lots of um, jobs now. With the help of writing a good CV, because majority of us, I think the reason why we are not seeing good jobs is because of not like not like you can't write good CVs. So with this program now, so they are teaching us how to write good CVs on how to get good jobs. Another way to address the challenge of employability skill-induced employment is to incorporate the learning of these skills in the curriculum of higher education.